Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from LinkedInRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're going to learn a fingerstyle arrangement I made especially for you guys and girls of Michael Jackson's Beat It. First, I'm going to play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes. And then we're going to break it down lick by lick, note by note, finger position by finger position with tabs on the screen as usual. It goes like this. Enjoy. You start by the original riff uh, with a couple of added bass notes. Um, so what I do is this. Okay, uh, I added a couple of bass notes there. Now uh, you start with the open E bass string and then you hammer on three on the bass string. Now, I hammer it on because it adds a sort of a percussion sound, okay, instead of picking it, okay, but that's just my uh, preference, you can pick it, then two on the A string, then the open G string, then two on the D string with the open E bass again, okay, this is one added bass note. Uh, because this is finger style, so to keep the harmony going, and then uh, this. Two, hammer on to four on the D string, and then two on the D string, and then open D and A strings. Now this is an inverted D5 power chord, because D, D5, has D, and A. So if you invert that, you get D and A, or A and D. So you can call it, if you want to get really technical about this, you can call it D5 slash A, D5 over A. But this is just an inverted D5 chord. Uh, that's the logic behind adding the A bass note there. So uh, you play that twice, and the second time around you play it once. So. Then you can play it again, and then I play this. Okay, uh, I ham I hammer on. I uh, bar the twelfth fret on strings three and four, the G and D strings. I play the E bass. Then I play strings three and four twice. Then I bar fourteen on the fourth and fifth strings, and then. I, play, I just play them, so... Now you can do this. Okay, you can add bass notes in between them. Actually, why not? Just do that. So it's two bass notes at the start, then 12, bass, 12, then 14. Then two bass notes again. Then you do it again. Okay? So, okay, 
It's bass, bass, 12, bass, 12, 14, bass, bass, 12, bass, 12, 14. Got it? Okay? And you can play that twice or four times, as many as you like. That's the intro. So um, you start with this. Um, before we play the licks, I want to show you the two chords that I use here. I use this as E minor, and I use this for D, because usually the D starts on this and then goes to 5. So um, it's 7, 8, 9 on strings 1, 2, and 3. Okay, 7, 8, 9. This is E minor because it's the high notes of the E minor chord right here. And I use this 7, 7, and 7. This is D6. But then it turns the 7 on the E string turns into 5. So this is D, 5, 7, and 7 because you've got 5, 7, and 7 on the D chord. Okay? So um, this is E minor, this is D. Okay, D6 into D. Now um, there are a couple of more chords around here, um, but they're not chords, they're intervals. Uh, there's this, and there's this. But we'll talk about it later because those are um, kind of harmonizations for the melody line. Um, the background chord is still uh, just E minor and the D bass. So these are <clears throat> the two main chords in this arrangement. So you start with this E minor and you play the bass and then you play the chord. Okay? Five times. Then, using your pinky on and off the string, you play 10 and 8 on the 2nd string. You can harmonize this with the 3rd string. Okay, so... Then it's this. Um, okay. Now, you can treat this as D5. Um, because it is a D5 um, interval, but you do this, okay? You play five on the first string, three on the second string, and you bar the third fret, and you play this with the D uh, string, okay? Then you take the pinky off and put it on again, so you've got five, three, five. Okay, got it? You're barring the three. Then you slide this to seven and five. Okay, now you can play the bass notes in any way you feel like. Um, okay, just put the bass notes in wherever you feel comfortable. Um, and just make sure that you play them as the first beat. Every first beat, play a bass note, and that can be enough. Okay, it's a bit empty, but it's enough to create the harmony. So that's the rudimentary harmony here. And then you do the same thing with a slightly different rhythm. You just add a couple of E minor chords. So instead of five, you've got do 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 do. You've got seven, and you do exactly the same thing. And then ten and eight on the second string. Then the D five. Now if this is D five, then this is E five. So it's D five back to E five. That's why I used this specific harmony. Okay, 
Okay, so these are the first two lines. Now it's uh, this. Um, okay, this is uh, C major seven technically because we're not playing anything, but you don't have to play the second string, so this would be C. Now, um, you're already on, on, no, sorry, you're already on this, on 7, on the E string, so use this. Uh, you play the 7 again, then you pull it back and put it on 5, put your first finger on 3 on the A string, play those, okay? Now if you want to harmonize, either harmonize with the G string, or if you want a C major 7 sound, harmonize with both the 2nd and 3rd string, okay? And then, um, 3, 0 on the E string, 3 on the B string, open E string. So, okay, that was the lick. So, okay, that was the context. So, um, okay, and then the E string twice open and then D and you can play the whole chord then um, leave it on take the finger off of the E string play the E string once and the B string twice on three okay so you can harmonize the B string with the G string okay and you can also play the bass note with them the D bass note Okay, so and then this. It's open E string again, then three and zero on the E string with E minor as your harmony, so just play strings one, two, three, and six. And then open E string again and this time D and you play the first um the first string is your melody note, you can harmonize with the rest of the chord, and then play the second string or the second and third strings if you want to harmonize it. Okay? Hope this was clear. So again, okay, zero, 030 zero, as the E minor melody line, then D. The melody is strings 1 and 2, okay, inside the D chord. And uh, if you want to harmonize it, just play the rest of the chord with it. And you play it again. And you can play more bass notes. Okay? For the original beat. And you can also play the chord along with those bass notes. Okay, if you want, if that feels right for you. You don't have to. You can do it, you don't have to. Um, find your own way to, um, to play this. Find a way that suits your own style. You don't have to play exactly what I do. That's why I give you options. Um, <clears throat> I try at least to give you options. Um, all right, so that was the, um, that was the verse with its first ending. Okay, the first ending was this. Okay, the second ending is this. Okay, the E minor line is the same line, and the the D line is this. Okay, you slide from ten to twelve with your third finger on the second string. You play twelve again. You play 10 on the E string, you play 12 on the B string, then you play 10, 12 on the B string harmonized with 11 on the G string. 
Now remember, this is the D line, so you play the bass with it. Okay, you play the bass with 10 on the E string. Okay, now this outlines a D chord. Okay? 10, 10, and 11, because it's the high notes of the D chord over there. So... can add uh, 10 on the B string at the very end there before the start of the verse. Uh, the verse, the chorus. Okay, that makes a smoother transition, a more, a more accurate transition because that's what Michael Jackson sings there. Let's play the verse again slowly from the start. E minor. Okay, and then D5 to E5. Don't forget to bar three. Five, three, five, seven. Then again, with seven E minors instead of five. Seven again. Five with the C bass. Okay, five, three, zero, three on the B string, open E string. D. Okay, two, zero on the E string. First ending, E minor, D. And then again. You can also slide into D. Yeah, you can create an embellishment there. It, it fits with the sliding motif here and the sliding motif here. Um, so why not slide into D as well? That's the verse. Now the chorus starts with E minor. Okay, again, exactly the same line, this time with two. E minor chords. You had five E minor chords, you had seven E minor chords, now you're playing two. And then ten and eight on the second string. And then this. Okay? Seven, seven, and seven. This is, this is D6, as we talked about, and you prepare 5 on the E string, and you play it with the D um, bass note, you play this twice, then you take the finger off the pinky and play 5, and then put pinky on 8 on the 2nd string, you can play the 2nd and 3rd strings, okay, so it's... And then, just um, five E minor chords again. And then, ten on the second string, then you can bar seven instead of putting on this because uh, you don't have to, you don't, you're not going to use the five uh, in this lick, so you can just bar 7 and play it with an open D string, play it twice, so it's okay, now the correct timing is this, it, the, first, um, the first chord comes before the beat, also with D, so okay, it's da 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 Okay? It comes right before the beat. So that's where you put the bass notes. Okay? Got it? Then it's this. Now, the melody line itself is the same. It's... It's 5-3-5-3-5. Five, three, five, three, five. And then five three five three. Um, 
<clears throat> but first, you play it with the E bass and harmonize with five on the second string. Okay, so it's five on the second string. This creates a sort of a in E minor harmony. Because this is a part of this, which is E minor. Okay, D minor shape, because D minor, D sharp minor, E minor. Okay, so, so this gives you an E minor triad there. So, no, not, not triad, a minor third. Okay, so harmonize with five on the second string. Five, three, five, three, five. Then bar three again for the D5 sound again, and this time use the D bass. Five, three, five, three. Okay, and then do it again. And then five at the end. Then the ending the first ending of the verse. And then the intro again. So um, the verse, uh, no, the verse, the, the chorus. Remember this, the D6? Pinky on eight this time, then minor outline five on the B string now three on the B string with D repeat five at the end the first ending of the verse To the intro. Before you go, practice this. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons right here for you to learn already and I make new ones on a regular basis or at least I try to. Go download the tab from the website. The link is in the description below and uh, the tab is for free just like the lesson is for free. Even though there's a donation button on the website if you wish to give something back for the lessons and help out with making more of these lessons, any donation whatsoever would be helpful and go right back into Lick and Riff and um, into making the arrangements, making time to film the lessons, to practice the arrangements, to perfect them, to write them down, to try different versions. It all takes time and work. Filming the lessons, editing them, uploading them, it all takes time and effort as well. So if you want to help out, I'd be more than grateful for your help and I thank you in advance for it. You go practice this. Remember, make your own arrangement of this. I'm pretty sure that with enough work you can find uh, a better way to play this than I did. Okay, who knows? Um, uh, I'm not saying that the way I play it is the ultimate way to play this. I just give you the tools, you make your own arrangement of this. Uh, have fun, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.